Hey guys, what's up? It's Rosie and welcome to my 2024 reset. I am so glad this is happening. I'm so here for it. 2023 was a garbage fire for me and I'm thrilled to be putting it behind us. I just wanted to start off this video by saying, if you've been with me since the beginning of 2023 when I started uploading frequently, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. And it has been just like so fulfilling to take this on as a real legit hobby and do it because I love it and be consistent with it. And it has been very rewarding and it's just so fun. And I love talking to people through these videos. So if you have been here for a hot sec for like a day, anytime, please just like know I appreciate you. And I hope you have a wonderful 2024. I hope your 2023 was good too, but I am very excited to be focusing on the future and looking forward because 2023 certainly threw some curveballs and I want mundane. I want nothing out of the ordinary for at least six months. I would love a very peaceful start to 2024. I personally am really trying to do a real reset for 2024. I'm trying to reset my habits, reset my space, reset my goals, obviously, and really just like give myself a chance to look at where I am, look at where I wanna be and figure out the steps to get there. So I got home after traveling for Christmas and I took the day off on Friday. So that was good, that was very helpful because I needed to get my shit in order. <laughs> so the first thing I did was clean my space and get everything organized, go buy some groceries, really start with a clean, fresh slate for 2024. It was honestly just so refreshing and nice to be able to come home, do everything I needed to do to make myself feel good, and then have like a little self-care day yesterday where I went shopping for the final time in a mall for a while and just really, you know, like did something I enjoyed, but also kept, kept balanced, kept myself, you know, within the guidelines of the way I'm trying to be for next year. So I've had a lovely weekend so far. And tonight, it is New Year's Eve as I'm talking to you. Um, tonight I'm having some friends come over and we're gonna like physically make our vision board. Which is gonna be super fun. And so I'm going to just put it up on the screen here. And this is what my vision board looks like. Um, I really wanted it to be, you know, I wanted it to be bright and happy and put in things that I actually do want to do and I'm not ashamed of, like, I put a vlogging camera on here, I put like a YouTube plaque, um, I put books, obviously, I put Kenan and I, because it's always good to see. Um, I put outdoor, I put a picture of the Garden of the Gods from when Agatha and Marissa visited because I wanna do more outdoor exploring here in Colorado next year. And yeah, I mean, just in general, I have a lot of stuff I wanna maintain as well as build upon. And so that's like Kenan, that's, our relationship that's YouTube that's I have I've got some pictures of like people at house parties like you know like cheersing and stuff like that and I want to host more in the new year because we finally have a space in which I can have like a good amount of people over and like have some fun um, and I love hosting it's so fun I'm very happy with how my vision board came out and I think it is very well representative of what I want let's just do a quick year recap of 2023 just so we could put it behind us. Um, like I said, it was pretty much a shit show for me. Um, I had, let's start with the cons so we can end with the pros because we want to be in a positive headspace. Um, I had two deaths in the family. I lost two grandparents and that was really hard. A lot of family turmoil because of one of the deaths and just really like a lot of emotional strain and you just never think, I don't know. Growing up, I had a pretty normal family life and you don't, I didn't really expect to ever distance myself from anyone in my family. And I, this year, had to cut out the person that like I looked up to the most growing up. I wanted to be her so bad. Um, but, you know, uh, when you're older, you find out people's true intentions and you understand who they are at their core. And unfortunately, sometimes people just aren't good people. <laughs> um, and it really sucks when they're family members that you wish you could keep around. So uh, it was a very hard year on the family front. But with it, I did get to spend a lot of time with my family. I did not expect to go home three times. I expected to go home once, maybe twice. 
I went home three times. It's been very nice to reconnect and, you know, see and appreciate the family members that are still there and that I love so much. This was just like a bad year for money. And I, I have had issues in the past with it. Um, I am going to be doing a no buy slash low buy year for next year. And I'm gonna have a whole video on that, explaining what my rules are, explaining how I came about deciding to do such a thing. Um, and so that will go into it a lot more in depth, but essentially it was a really rough year financially and I'm determined to not let that happen again because it caused so much unnecessary stress that I really, really could have done without. So we're gonna do that. We're, we're gonna take steps to make that much better next year. <sighs> Along with financial stress, had a lot of health stress, I got COVID for the third time. It sucked real bad. I'm still feeling the effects. Long COVID is real. Go get your boosters, people. Got a double ear infection the week after my grandpa's funeral. Um, overall, my physical health has been just like an, a very low point this year. Physically, I don't feel well. I, I'm working very hard on healing my issues with body image and binge eating disorder. The binge eating disorder is hard to talk about, but it was really like, it left me feeling very hopeless this year. And I recently joined an extra therapy group and it's really been helping me like put things into perspective and realizing I can take an active stance against it rather than letting it determine my life, which it has been for like a decade. So I'm over that. And I'm going to do my utmost best to heal that in the next year. But that made life a bit hard. And all of this just like led to high anxiety over the past year. I've developed a lot of anxiety around driving, which I never had. On Long Island, in New York, I could drive no problem. I was driving through the city, beep beep, I'm good. Here, the people, the drivers here are like genuinely horrible. Like I feel like they're worse than New York. And it has like, I don't know, I got into a minor car accident last year. And ever since then, I'm just on edge. I like, I can't control it. And I feel so bad for Kenan when he's driving and like maybe, I don't know, he makes a quick stop. I like gasp, like my body just can't control itself. I don't mean to be a backseat driver or like dramatic or anything. So sorry, Kenan. It just genuinely like has become this new, this new prevalent anxiety in my life. And I don't know why. Possibly because I have been working home, from home now for two years. So like I really don't drive as much. And I was a commuter to school, like in college. So I was driving all the time everywhere. So maybe it's just like the lack of practice now, but I would love to get over that in 2024 because I hate it. Genuinely, I hate it. It makes me so anxious and I just, huh, I need to work on that. The last year has sort of been just like really adulthood kicking my ass and me realizing that I need to stop my bad habits from like my teenage early 20 years now if I'm going to build any sort of foundation for like a solid stable future for later 20s, 30s, 40s me. So I am taking a lot of steps. I took a lot of first steps this year to try and improve myself. And so this next year is gonna be like getting through the hard parts of like change and really trying to trust myself and believe that I can do it. That overall sort of like the shitty parts of 2023, positive parts. I got a new job. I really like my coworkers. It has been a very, very stressful job, but I've gotten PTO, I'm no longer contract. Like I'm finally getting benefits, I have health insurance. So positive, positive things. We moved into this new home. Um, it is a duplex and we are renting it, but still more space. I got to decorate my office. I love my office so much. It brings me a lot of joy. We adopted Iggy, which despite the fact that he's a pain in the ass, I love him. Um, he has been a major challenge of 2023 because raising a puppy like four months old onwards is a lot. Do, please don't ever get a puppy. Do not ever get a puppy. Get a dog that is at least one or two years old. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. I talked to my therapist about it. She raised her dog from puppyhood onwards and she has a baby that's now two. She said the puppy was harder. Okay. So please do not put yourself through what I went through. And just adopt a nice little middle-aged dog from some shelter, okay? That's, they need it. That's what my parents did with Marley and they were right. They were smart. And Iggy, I mean, we did rehome him. So like I technically, 
I, I would never get him from a breeder or anything like that. But he was still a puppy. He was still fresh. He has no common sense still. Ugh. Anyways, we got a game. I was really consistent with YouTube this year, which I'm so proud of myself for. I have issues with consistency. I have issues with showing up for myself and things I actually want to do. I'm really only good if I have external deadlines that I know need to get done or I'm getting in trouble. So um, the fact that I was able to do this because I wanted to and because I enjoyed it and I set my own deadlines and I met them, it is a good, it was like a really good stepping stone towards getting more agency back in like my mental view of myself. Cause I really feel like for a lot of the past few years, life has been happening to me and I've just sort of been reacting, but I'm ready to like take control and you know, decide what's going on in my life and follow through. And then I also did lots of reading, which has been wonderful. I love reading. Um, I read the most books I've ever read in a year. I'm gonna say, I think it was 68. I still have to finish the new Hunger Games, new Hunger Games book, but I'm halfway through. I'm probably gonna finish it after I film these videos. So we were looking good. Um, but 68 books in a year is like insane for me. Next year, I'm trying to get a little crazier, but if you wanna hear about that, I'm going to have a reading recap that just sort of wraps up everything. Reading bookish in 2023, and I'll link that down below when that's out. Now let's hit some favorites real quick. Um, my 2023 favorites, I'll do a couple quick like beauty type things before I go into just general, you know, media and other stuff. My favorite perfume of the year was L.E.S. Boy Smells. This stuff, ugh. It just, it smells chic. It smells flowery, but mature. What does it, it's genderful fine fragrance. I love that. I got this in, I think, February, um, but I adore it. I'm halfway through it about, it is so good. And it just makes me smell like an it girl, I think. <laughs> like this is what I imagine the it girl smell like. So big fan. And for legit makeup, um, I got this the same day. I got the LES, I think. Uh, but the Fenty Beauty Matchsticks in Amber, which is their lightest possible shade. Um, this is just a contour stick. I have really been using a lot of cream products this year, which was never the case for me. I have like, I have really dry skin, so I feel like it sticks and like you can see the dryness a lot. Um, but with the right products underneath, this looks really good. And I quite like it. Then we have the cookie highlighter from Benefit. Um, I used this entire thing up in one of those like big palettes that they give you, like a big gift palette. Um, and so I bought another one just in Mexico when I was there with Mackenzie. That's another highlighter of 2023. Shout out Mackenzie, love you. It was so good to see her in person and like ball out in Mexico. Um, but the cookie highlighter, so good. I needed the full regular size and then this is what I used on my eyes for most of the year, which is the, it's the MAC Connecting Color Eyeshadow Palette embedded in burgundy. And it includes Ho, H-A-U-X, Naked Lunch, Mega Mocha, Giga Glitz, Loading, and Wanna Chat. Naked Lunch has just been like a cult favorite for forever. So it's definitely probably the one I used the most out of this whole palette. But as you can see, it's just like, really nice easy pinkish neutrals um and that's generally what i tend to go for in makeup so loved it i feel like mac really made a big comeback this year too like at least in my life but also other people's i've saw a lot more mac favorites this year than in recent ones so love to see it now let's jump into the media music number one chapel rome of course Love her, got to see her live, probably gonna go see her live again in Boulder um, in the spring, which would be so epic. She put out her first album, The Rise and Fall of a Midwest Princess, full of bangers. Almost all of them are ones I listen to on repeat. There are a couple that are just like sad that I don't go for, but it's probably a good thing, right? And then of course, Taylor Swift. She's still number one. Blondie really got it this year. Eras tour, set records, made history. Um, and Cruel Summer, like I did not love Cruel Summer when it first came out. I was like, okay, I guess that's a song um, and it's fine. This summer, it was a cruel fucking summer, man. And so it just hit different, you know? Cruel Summer and Karma were two that I was like, 
this is so applicable to life um so it really just helped <laughs> podcast the haunted objects podcast of course i raved about them i met greg and dana uh, at the stanley hotel which is still one of the coolest experiences of the year that's another highlight i i was bad at writing down actual events so this is another highlight thank you kenneth and i love them i just love the way that they talk about paranormal things and as someone who is very deeply invested in the paranormal it they really changed my point of view on a lot of it and they're very well researched they've been doing this for like a, over a decade maybe two and it's just like incredible to hear them talk about these things they have so much experience in and how they come to their conclusions about ghosts and haunted objects and stuff like that and they have a really good balance on the podcast of like history plus stuff about the actual object and what they've experienced and then like just general like fun banter so big fan and then i wasn't sure if i put this in my last year like 2022 favorites but drinking the kool-aid i binge listened to them all of december and january of last year and then since then i've been just consistently listening and i love those girls i love them cassidy and amanda have my heart they're so fun i can't remember if i put them as last year's top podcast but they tie for the spot of this year's top podcast if not television i am not a huge tv girly anymore in high school i used to watch series that were like 10 seasons long no problem just sit down watch six episodes in a row go to school next day repeat and like like supernatural ruined my brain anyways um so i don't tech i don't like tend to seek out tv shows really anymore unless people tell me i should watch them and so thankfully this is just a shout out to my my media group um agatha mel and jess those are the girlies that have gotten me to watch uh, almost everything on this list and i love them for it and we have our own little like meetups where we watch shows together and that really helps me get through it. Um, and I love it. I enjoy analyzing the media and there's so many things to look at and like discuss. And especially if you're watching it with a group, it's so much more fun. Um, but these are because of them. Yellow Jackets, thanks Mel. Black Sails, thanks Jess. The Last of Us, I literally, that was both of them. They were watching the finale together and the night before I decided I was gonna watch the whole series and I did it. I finished with two minutes to spare so I could live watch the finale with them. So, I mean, that's another highlight, <laughs> maybe. Um, the terror, that's Jess. The terror stole my heart on Thanksgiving day. Truly such a beautiful short show, 10 episodes, I believe. And the only one season that matters. So, so good. Next, the fall of the house of Usher. I know, apparently, I didn't think this was the case, but apparently Mike Flanagan's TV shows are somewhat controversial and people either like love them or hate them. I love them. Everything I've seen by him like fucks real hard. So the fall of the House of Usher was so stunning and the themes and then the bringing in of all the different Edgar Allan Poe books into this one overarching story. Eh, so good. Cannot recommend enough. And then of course, I'm counting this, Hellier. It's all on YouTube and Amazon Prime, I think. It's technically a TV show though, but that's also make, made by Greg and Dana Newkirk. And it's just a, it's an insane ride. It's like, just, I can't even describe it. Uh, just the only word that could describe it is the word synchronicity. And you need to watch that show and count how many times they say it because it's ridiculous. Anyways, movie. This was hard because I didn't watch very many movies that I can remember at the very least in 2023. But Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse definitely took the cake out of the ones I do remember. Barbie was close. I thought it was good. I really liked Barbie, but Spider-Man, oh my God. Across the Spider-Verse was just like so phenomenal and all the different art styles and it was funny and the music and just like everything about it was great. Real like overall artists um, are Egg Dudes who made my phone case and A Soft Wrongness who is a collage artist who made this. Um, I'm gonna put their ads down below. Um, I follow them on Instagram and then from there I have, you know, purchased some of their things. Their stuff is gorgeous and I love keeping up with them and I really like the way they, they view things. So love that. And then finally, my favorite game of the year is once again, Stardew Valley. It's just the one I keep coming back to. I restarted this year and I went in 
I'm trying to go for perfection run right now. Um, and it's hard, but I've made it the farthest I've ever made it so far. And I love that for me. So it's a, it's a comfort game. Whenever I don't know what to do, I play Stardew Valley. <laughs> Those are all of my favorites. I think it's time to get into last year's goals and see how we did. And then talk about this year's goals. This is what they look like. I'm just gonna read them out to you because this whole finagling of the camera doesn't work very well in this room because of the lighting. So let me read them. <laughs> Number one, read 40 books. Crushed it. Um, I had 40 as my goal and then I switched it to 52 and then I ended up reading 68. So pretty slay. Next, create slash post something exciting two times a month. Absolutely did that. I posted at least once, if not twice a week, almost every week for the year of 2023 on YouTube. So pretty wild. <laughs> Next, go on one audition. I did not do that. I did not do that and I regret not doing it. I wish I had, because now I'm entering a season of life in which I have my full-time job, but then I'm also in grad school and I will be taking two classes and one class was more than enough this semester. So I don't anticipate having a lot of free time to go and do theater stuff, but I'm hoping grad school, since I'm getting my master's in arts administration, I'm hoping that will scratch the theater itch because I'll be talking about it just in a, a different, more businessy way. Um, next, increase my lung capacity. I was doing pretty good at that until I got COVID again. So I gave that one a little squiggly, a sort of like in progress. I tried, I did it, but eh, it's not great right now. Next, save. <laughs> I originally had saved $10,000 and then somewhere along the way I crossed it out to save $5,000 and I, I still didn't do that. So it was a rough year, lots of surprise expenses and that's that. Next, talk to a friend at least one time a week. Did it. Um, next, hit 1.5K on Instagram. Did not do it. Also did not try very hard to be quite H. Um, I posted, I certainly was a lot more consistent posting this year than I was in 2022. And I had fun with it. So I'm not mad about it. It just sort of like is what it is and I'm not out there to, you know, gain followers. Well, obviously I wanna gain followers, but I'm not, that's not the only goal. The goal is to like make a, a collection of pictures that I enjoy looking at, you know? So I think I did that and I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with how that came out. Hit 1K on YouTube. Boy, was that optimistic. I don't know. I really don't know what I thought, um, but didn't happen. We're not even at 500 yet, but hey, if you wanna help me out, we're decently close. Get a new job slash go full time. I did that. Prior to my current job, I was a contractor at a different textbook company. And so I did get a full job, I did go full time, I did get benefits. That's a sleigh. Next, visit one new place. I did that as well. I went to Austin. And as of now, I've been to Austin twice. Yeah, I've been to Austin twice. Um, because my new office is there for my new job. Uh, and that's very fun and exciting. I quite like Austin. And then finally, be kinder to myself. This was a very hard year for that. I'm not gonna lie, but I checked it off because in being kinder to myself, I'm also including choosing to take care of myself, even if my, the inside voice in my head was not very positive this year, I will say. But throughout the year, as we got towards the end of the year, I have finally like started to work on things that will heal my binge eating, heal my compulsive spending. And that is hard because in that process, you just have to let go and be kinder to yourself. But I've been doing it and I've been working on it and it obviously is a process, but I feel pretty solid about it. So that was last year's overall goals. Now, we're moving to a new notebook because I got this along the way this year. And this is sort of the notebook I wrote all of my YouTube stuff in. Um, and I figured I'd transfer over here for like the big goals and the YouTube related things. And then this continues to be my little monthly goal checklist. Um, I do have my January goals in here and I will share those because there are not that many. But let's go over 2024 goals first. Number one, read 100 books. I'm a little crazy for that one, I'm not gonna lie, but uh, you'll hear more about it in my book recap video, which I will also link down below when it's ready. Um, I'm trying to get through all of the books I own. I have read probably a meager 10% of my current book ownage, 
and I need to change that. <laughs> so, 100 books, most of them physical, is the goal we're going for. Next, complete my low buy, no buy challenge. Once again, there's a video coming out about that in which I will explain it more. That'll be linked down below. Become consistent with a loving movement routine. This is going to be me trying to take care of myself, quite honestly. But loving movement to me is movement that I know my body needs. And I have been so like, so black and white thinking my whole life, but of like, either you're really healthy and you're working out all the time or, and you're like eating perfectly clean or you're eating like shit, you're never moving and yada, yada, yada. So I've been just sort of like slingshotting between those two things my whole life and my therapist has helped me work on the gray area and meeting somewhere in the middle. And so loving movement to me is I got a walking pad. I just like, I'm not trying to go crazy. I'm not trying to run on it. I'm not doing inclines or anything. I'm literally just walking, literally just walking. I'm like watching a TV show. I'm incorporating movement into my schedule that doesn't push or hurt me in a way that I'm uncomfortable with and I know will help my body going forward because she needs it. I need to move. I physically feel horrible a lot of the time and living in a different climate, climate, I don't know. I don't even know what to call it, but living up in the mountains versus living down on sea level has fucked my body up and I have yet to adjust fully to it. Literally when I got off the plane coming home from Christmas this time, I was wheezing on the way to the bag check. That's ridiculous. Like I was just trying to get my bags to go home already puffing, huffing. So I would like to get stronger for my future self's sake as well as my current self's sake. <laughs> Find new doctors. As unfortunate as it is, I have not sucked out sucked out, seeked out. I haven't found new doctors here because my old doctor from Long Island very kindly just sees me whenever I'm home. But as I'm here and as you know, like when I got my double ear infection, I had to go to an urgent care and they charged me like $400 to see me and say, yeah, you had an ear infection. Um, I would rather go to a primary care where I pay $25 copay. Um, and for them to tell me the same thing. So it is just the smart thing to do. And I need to create a relationship with doctors because I'm also interested in switching up my medication and seeing where that can take me because, you know, uh, it's not the best to stay on the same um, antidepressants for too long because they can stop working. And I kind of feel like they might just stop working. So, but I have to talk to a doctor about that. I need to find a doctor first. So that's where we're going with that. I want to take one solo trip. It doesn't have to be anywhere crazy. I really want to go somewhere else in the US that I haven't been or see a new part of Colorado I haven't been to. Or when I went to the Stanley, I was like, damn, I could really see myself just staying here for a week and reading and chilling and vibing. That could be fun. Um, but I don't spend a lot of time by myself that is not working or, you know, doing something too often. I would like to spend more time with myself exploring and like enjoying my own company. And yeah, like, in 2019, I spent a week alone in France on my way to work alone, essentially, in Italy for three months. And since then, I don't know. I, I really miss the amount of independence I had in college. Um, and obviously a lot of that is due to, I have to pay bills now, I don't got money for independence. But I still would like to rediscover some of it if possible. It's on here again, but we have reached 1K on YouTube. And the thing is, it doesn't hurt to put it down, you know? It doesn't hurt, why not? And it might help me, you know, like push out a few extra videos if I'm like, oh, I'm trying to reach that goal. Um, so yeah, it's on here again. <laughs> Next, uh, educate myself on and organize my finances. As I said, 2023, horrible year for finances. Really bad time. Um, I recently took out a personal loan to fix that. And that is terrifying. Um, and so with that, I have to get my shit in order or else my financial future is ruined. So I will discuss that more in the low buy, no buy video. If you want to hear about it and my like budget plan for the new year. But yeah, I like need to learn the ins and outs of how my finances work, how I can organize them the best and how to make them work for me. And then finally read through at least 50% 
of my physical books. I have to say I definitely have at least like 250. I think 250 and I'm at about 10% red. So um, we need that other 40% babes. We need to get there um, and that's what we will be working on. And so those are the 2024 goals. And real quick, I'll do my January goals because we're not doing a January reset. This is more than enough. I don't have many. I've decided to try and make like my monthly goals a little lighter and not as crazy because then I'm more likely to get them done. Um, but I have read at least three books from my shelves because I know at least two or three on my Kindle that I want to read. That's another favorite. Whoops, toss it in there. My Kindle. I love her. Next. <laughs> Intentional movement three times a week. That's that loving movement either the walking pad or yoga or something of the sort. Next, deep clean my closets, declutter and depop the clothes and items. Um, you know, we just moved and I decluttered before that, but having moved and seeing all this stuff here now, I'm like, I, why did I bring that with me? <laughs> I didn't need to. Um, so I will be doing that. And then daily five minutes of intentional breathing. That's my final one. That's one I'm working on with my therapist. We're trying new types of somatic therapy as a part of this thing called bottom up, um, which is a new kind of therapy that's different than CBT. And CBT I've just been doing for like five years, four years, and it I'm not getting anywhere with it anymore. So we decided to try something new and bottom up seems like the way to go. So that's a part of that. It's also gonna help me with my lung capacity if I keep it consistent. Well, that pretty much wraps up my 2024 reset. This was a long one. This was a massive video. So if you made it this far, thank you so much. Um, I hope you had a fabulous end to your 2023. I hope your 2024 starts wonderfully. And I hope you have also, you know, like got your life in order and feel good about going into the new year. If you want to hang out, I would absolutely adore it if you would subscribe and see what we've got going on for 2024. Uh, all of my links are always down below if you want to chat on Instagram or anything like that. And I just love you so much. I hope you have a fabulous whatever time of day you're in. And I will talk to you very, very soon.